Chaos in the courts. Uh, first, you know, as you saw in the tease in Texas, you have a court uh, chaos denying enforcement of the Texas ability to enforce immigration laws. They tried to do something unique by utilizing their own law enforcement. Of course, you have to remember back to the Arizona case on SB 1070 where the Supreme Court said no. Unless the federal government basically gives you the green light, deputizes your local authorities to do these jobs, even if it's a horrendous situation, you as the state are not able to utilize your resources. And so that, I think as this case makes its way up through the court system, they're going to have to look at SB 1070 and you might get a, another review by the U.S. Supreme Court of whether or not that was the right interpretation of Article 1. There's another uh, I think uh, interesting issue here, though, that in the law, it does allow for more state action if you can qualify at what's happening as an invasion. Correct. And right now, when you think about how many Americans have been killed by fentanyl, the amount of people who are crossing the border illegally into Texas, I mean, that that to me is kind of like the definition of of a of an invasion because it actually is killing people. People are losing their lives. They're not killing with guns. They're killing with drugs. No, you're right. I think there's a couple things we need to clarify. Number one, yesterday the Supreme Court issued a, uh, a denial of a stay request that came from the federal government. And what they were trying to do, the Biden administration was saying, listen, the Fifth Circuit put in place an administrative stay which allowed the law of Texas to be enforced. That law makes it a state crime to cross the Texas-Mexico border between ports of entry. If a police officer believes they have evidence that a person illegally crossed the Rio Grande, that person be charged with a Class B misdemeanor, which carries punishment up to six months in jail. For subsequent offenses, the person can be charged with second-degree felonies, facing up to 20 years in prison. If the migrant is convicted and has served their sentence, a judge will require to order the police to tra- transfer them back to the point of entry. So as of yesterday, that law was still in place. As of today, it's not. Because while the Supreme Court denied the request of the Biden administration for a stay, what happened today was the Fifth Circuit, before oral argument, this is unheard of, this morning issued an order dissolving the administrative stay that they had put in place. Different panel and included a a dissent from a judge appointed by President Trump. Uh, Another judge was appointed by Obama and Bush. And those two voted that the stay be lifted. So this is going to end up right back at the Supreme Court of the United States, and it's creating chaos at the border, more legal chaos in all of this. Yes, I mean, so again, you've got the appeals court putting the the Texas immigration law back on hold. Uh, They will then want to appeal this uh, to the Supreme Court, uh, and uh, the Supreme Court initially halted the, uh, the law. So, I mean, you've got here again another major constitutional case potentially heading to the Supreme Court and a chance for them to look at SB 1070 in light of the illegal immigration we are facing today and the consequences not just of the amount of people coming and of the resources where these towns and the crime, but also of the, the amount of, Mer- of Americans that have died that you can directly tie to illegal immigration. Well, that's because there is a provision in the Constitution that says if a state is being invaded— yes. Um, which this constitutes an Article invasion. One, Section 10. Right. If the state is being invaded, then they can take action to protect their citizens. You know, Tulsi, we have a Supreme Court case. It came out of Arizona uh, back in the uh, early 2000s on SB 1070, which was a way for Arizona to uh, allow uh, and to deputize its local law enforcement to begin implementing uh, and utilizing immigration laws because of another time when they were being flooded with illegal immigrants. And this even predates the the problems with uh, fentanyl killing so many Americans, the number one killer of 18 to 45-year-old Americans, uh, both men and women. Uh, but we we then saw Texas. The Supreme Court said, if you don't get uh, the federal government, can either stop this and or they can give you a green light. Texas tried to do this on their own and the Biden administration came in based on that Supreme Court case and said, even if it's working, we're telling you right now, Texas, you must stop. Now, Texas can appeal it. Supreme Court could look at their uh, decision making back then and say w- whether or not they got it right or wrong based off the constitutional provision. But the Biden administration did not have to stop it. The Supreme Court didn't say, Tulsi, that the Biden administration, that, th- that Texas can't do this. They only cannot do it if the Biden administration tells them to stop. So even when it's working and a state is willing to put up its own resources, this administration is willing to tell them 
No, you can't help. You've got to let the people flow into your state with the crime, with the drugs, and with the people overwhelming your hospitals, your schools, and your economies. And that, that's really where we, the people, should should be uh, asking and de- asking questions and demanding answers from the Biden-Harris administration on why that is. They are clearly failing to fulfill their responsibility of securing our country. And the fact that they are getting in the way of and demanding a cease and desist from states who, who are dealing with this mass illegal immigration, people unvetted from all parts of the world streaming across our borders by the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions. Why is it that the Biden-Harris administration is actively, they're, they're not even just saying, hey, guys, we need you to stop. They are actively getting in the way of Governor Abbott and his efforts to secure Texas. For example, they are actively turning a blind eye and, and even facilitating this illegal immigration occurring. I'm going to be headed to California in a few days um, to go and check out the southern border because there, there is a lot happening there that is not, that's not getting the attention right. that it deserves. It's a, it's a much more condensed area. They don't have big open spaces like Texas and Arizona have, but this makes it very possible uh, and, and what's actually happening is people can step across the border and within a five minute walk get lost in a neighborhood uh, where they, they, they're not able to be apprehended for illegally entering our country. Yep. Um, this is such a huge problem. There, there are political motives behind this on the Biden Harris administration's part, and we, we cannot allow them to continue to uh, make our country less secure, put us at risk and incur the kind of hardship and damage that that we are incurring uh, because of their open border policy. You know, we we pointed this out earlier, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the Constitution, which does require a state to have consent of Congress for various things like what they're trying to do in Texas. But it says, unless actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay. And Tulsi, to me, they are being invaded. And the invasion, also the courts have said, has to include an element of either violence or death. And we've got this fentanyl deaths that are unprecedented. So we have an invasion going on on our border, and the states are just trying to protect their citizens. Yes, and and there are unfortunately so many cases of imminent danger, both to people and their property, as a direct result of these open borders. I think the recent ruling... Uh, stating that those who break our laws by illegally entering our country are now afforded some kind of Second Amendment right to own firearms is egregious and offensive, even as many state governments and the federal government continue to crack down on the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens in this country, turning us into felons. My, my home state of Hawaii right now, unfortunately, the state legislature is pushing a bill that would do just that, that would turn my husband and I and many other law-abiding gun owners into felons. And yet uh, someone who's entered our country illegally, committed that crime, is is now allowed to be armed. It's so bizarre. It's, you can't even, I can't even, you can't even put it in a, any kind of context where it makes sense. Uh, Tulsi, we appreciate it. Thanks for being with us.